Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers, with challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come, bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to Frontiers. Anchorage has a new mayor. And in our show this week, we're going to spend some time getting to know Ethan Berkowitz. As for his political career, perhaps this motto might apply. If first you don't succeed, try, try again. And after a 10-year stint in the legislature, he has run for governor, lieutenant governor, congressman, a perennial candidate until now. Even before Ethan Berkowitz took office, the tempo was upbeat. It was hard not to be swept away by the wide spectrum of cultures at the mayor's diversity celebration. To be able to be here and celebrate the mayor's diversity celebration, we are very proud as a Filipino group. Berkowitz sometimes gets criticism for his many tries at statewide office. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. But when it comes to knowing how to reach out, his campaign experience hasn't hurt. Mis niños son en la programa de inmersión. Berkowitz says diversity should be more than just a slogan. We get to write a chapter of history that's uniquely Alaskan and it's distinctly global. Diversity, he told the crowd, is one of Anchorage's biggest strengths. We have the most incredible people in the world and we're going to do things that no one has even thought possible. And we're going to do it together. There's the image a politician projects, but just how far is it from the reality? He's very well behaved. He is. He doesn't get himself into trouble. He doesn't do inappropriate things. He doesn't say inappropriate things. Ivan Moore, a political consultant, met Berkowitz long before he married Mara Kimmel back in the days when he was a single guy running for a House seat in Turnigan. I mean, he won the first time in 1996 by 26 votes. Hi, my name is John Moore. Ethan Berkowitz is my godfather. Berkowitz shared a duplex with Moore, a coincidence, later parlayed into a campaign ad featuring Moore's son, John. He sometimes goes away for a long time. My mama says he's doing important work, but I miss him when he's gone. Work in Juneau that turned high profile when Berkowitz became House Minority Leader. One watershed moment when Berkowitz spoke out against an attempt to influence an oil tax vote. This is our floor. Our floor. No telephone call is supposed to change what we're doing. No lobbyist is supposed to peer over the railing and tell us to change our mind. I think he was genuinely, personally offended that it was getting so blatant. It was a pretty shameful time, and I think Ethan's speech struck a nerve. Another nerve? Berkowitz's reputation for being too liberal, one Ivan Moore says is unfair. I think what we will see is someone who is about as um, middle of the road, pragmatic, smart, um, working across the aisle with everyone um, uh, as we've seen for a long, long time. Proof of that? Andrew Halcrow, a Republican and Berkowitz's opponent in the mayoral race. He's co-chair of Berkowitz's transition team, just now putting the finishing touches on the group's final report. He and I uh, fought in the same trenches a lot, and he's a guy I trust. Halcrow and Berkowitz served in the legislature at the same time. He's like me in the sense where we both despise politics. We just want to get the job done. Just get out of the way and let's get the job done and fix the problems. Halcrow will serve in Berkowitz's administration as director of the Anchorage Community Land Development Authority. His hope to reinvent the city for the next generation. Millennials, they want to live together. They want to be downtown. They not necessarily want to own cars. They want to live close to the city center and nightlife and restaurants. They also want good schools for their kids as well as parks and trails. 
But the need for this transformation comes as the state faces its worst budget crisis in history. The state and the city have to rethink their relationship. The city has to become more independent at the same time growing the economy. Is it that Ethan or Andrew are too smart for their own good. Moore hopes that for the city of Anchorage, the berkowitz halcrow collaboration marks the end of partisanship and an era of smarter government. Thinking about things critically, just being open to the process, not being an ideologue. But it won't be easy. There's Anchorage's chronic homeless population, which Berkowitz says is a top priority, as well as public safety, reversing a recent uptick in violent crime. For now, a grace period, because inaugural celebrations are about hope, not fear. The Lord's Prayer in Denina, an ancient Alaska Native language, as well as a duet featuring his daughter Ziva. Berkowitz's son Noah also told the story about a disagreement he had with his dad about how to pronounce the word proverb. But I pronounced it proverb instead of proverb. My dad and I argued for about half a minute, then I said pronoun, it's pronounced pronoun, so I would proverb be any different. <laughs> My dad smiled and said, Good point. <laughs> I tell you the story to tell you a little bit about my dad and what he will be like as our mayor, and because I won the argument. Ethan is very smart. Berkowitz's parents shared some of their insights into the new mayor. They say from the earliest age, he acted like a little man, even at the Tiny Tots playground. And these were kids who were three years old who could finally go to, to sort of a school. And Ethan took his father's briefcase and he walks into this tiny tots with a briefcase. And many, many years, because Ethan's in his 50s now, people still talk about that. Ethan learned his, uh, his uh, integrity in, at a very early age and at a, a, around the uh, family table. A table where there was always spirited debate. You had to tell the world or tell your family exactly the way it really was, because if you didn't, they somebody would jump on you real quick and figure it out and that I will faithfully perform the duties of mayor. While Berkowitz's opponents remain skeptical, he calls me Big John. Supporters like John Moore and his dad Ivan feel vindicated. You were Definitely, a year I was old I was when, five years old, yeah. So when we did um, the ad. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm just really happy for him. So does this event mark a generational change? Or is it just the honeymoon phase? of a new administration. We thought we'd have some fun with this with a quiz question about Mayor Berkowitz. This is a photo of Ethan Berkowitz many years ago. So what was he doing? A, working on a political campaign, B, studying law, C, working in Antarctica, or D, working as an intern? The answer, a little bit later in our program. Still ahead, military downsizing, how cuts to Anchorage will impact security for all of Alaska. Plus, we go one-on-one -on -one with Mayor Berkowitz, but first, advice from a predecessor. As he passes people, he'll have people say, there's the mayor, or there's our mayor. And he wants people to say, there's our mayor. We have a story, a story of 27 families that put 18 months of their lives into building a village a home for themselves and their future. Our Inupat culture goes back thousands of years carried by a strong sense of community. Our relationship with our natural surroundings is at the heart of our culture. By investing in future generations through development that is balanced with the love of our land, the Gupti Corporation brings together traditions of the past with visions of the future. When you've been in the oil and gas business as long as we have, you don't take things for granted, not success and certainly not the price of oil. At ConocoPhillips, we're still looking ahead, and we're still investing billions of dollars in Alaska. And that's made all the difference for companies like mine. With new projects, creating hundreds of construction jobs. For me, an empty union hall means people are working, and that's what it's all about. We are ConocoPhillips, Alaska's oil and gas company. 
Let's never forget the cost of freedom or take it for granted. As a veteran, you are entitled to certain benefits when you pass. To learn what benefits are included, ask for our free Veterans Information Kit and learn how a smart plan can provide all of the things that are not covered. We all enjoy the freedom you provide for us, and we thank you for your service. This is Dominic Hassar, owner and operator of the Cremation Society of Alaska. Call us at 277-2777 or visit our website. I've lived in Alaska since I was nine. I've spent two-thirds of my life in Alaska, and I want to spend the rest of my life in Alaska. There's so much going on in Anchorage, there's so much going on in Alaska, that you want to make sure that the news that you're watching is giving you the most accurate picture of what's happening in, in your community. What's important to KTVA is what's important to Alaska. I really appreciate that when something is going on in the community, KTVA is always there. The job for Mayor Berkowitz just got tougher. As part of the Army's ongoing efforts to downsize, there are plans to cut 2,600 soldiers from the 425 Airborne Brigade combat team at Fort Richardson. Berkowitz says that this will not only affect Anchorage, but security for the entire state. What I'm concerned about is it affects our ability to project force across Alaska, as since we're basically a, a forward position as far as Asia and as far as the Arctic goes. Yes, I'm concerned about that. It has really, really deep strategic implication. For now, Alaska's congressional delegation is looking for a way to reverse the cutbacks through the budget process. Well, we sat down with the mayor at his home in Turnigan before the news of the military cuts. We talked politics of the past, present, and future. You were painted as very, very ultra-liberal by the opposition. Because it served their purposes to paint me that way. But the reality is a far different story. I mean, if you look at, at my legislative history, people will see that I rejected different kinds of taxes and, uh, on many different occasions. I've always been fiscally responsible, insisting on balanced budgets. I proposed a balanced budget amendment. So my track record is very different than people who are my political opponents would have you believe, because they paint a picture that served their purpose which isn't necessarily the same as the truth. You have a very sharp, sarcastic sense of humor, and in a lot of the comments you made to the media, you made fun of them, and there's nothing that makes an opposition matter than to be made fun of, maybe more so than being criticized. Uh, is that a tendency you have to watch? It was a tool I used at a time where I had very few tools in my toolbox, and I used that tool because I didn't have the votes to, to win, and what, what, what I was able to do was actually develop relationships because people learn very quickly that if they were going to cross me, there was a price they were going to pay for it. And as a consequence, after I did that for a couple of years, I was able to be a lot more restrained on the House floor. People will see that and uh, able to forge many more deals uh, quietly. And, and the reputation I have uh, amongst people who worked closely with me, not those who, who chose to be more partisan, but those who worked closely with me, is that I can be a very good friend. Uh, and when I differ with you uh, on a position, it's and just I'll on a position. It's not personal. Well, one of the things that you will face is that you're probably going to have fewer dollars to work with, state dollars anyway. Mm -hmm. So the, the public safety department certainly could always use more people. I mean, every department could probably use more people. How are you going to improve uh, these bad numbers that we have, high rape rates? It's just a question of being smarter about crime. We, we have had, we've had a mentality in this country about being tough on crime. If we're smart on crime, and that's becoming a philosophy that's transcending the political spectrum. Everyone uh, from in Washington, D.C., from the left to the right, is embracing the idea that we've got to become smart on crime. And ha having participated um, in the criminal justice system for various parts of the last 25 years, it's a philosophy I'm very familiar with. One of the things about the mayor of Anchorage that's a little bit different maybe than other cities comparable to its side is the mayor of Anchorage is almost sort of a mayor for the state. Well, everybody who lives in Anchorage also lives in Alaska. And we're, even though we're geographically large, 
were very small. The degrees of separation between people is very slight. And I, I hope that people who live outside of Anchorage spend time coming here. I look, I look forward to hearing what they have to say. And if we work together, we can help the state resolve some of the issues that it confronts. And as the state resolves those issues, the state will be able to take care, of, take advantage of opportunities. And as that happens, Anchorage will also benefit. So we have a very symbiotic relationship. What's good for Alaska is good for Anchorage. What's good for Anchorage is good for Alaska. We're in a unique position now, though, because the, the state is in a, a position of some kind of fiscal crisis, a somewhat self-inflicted, if, 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 which is my opinion, but they're in a, a fiscal crisis. And Anchorage can help lead the way out of that crisis. And as we do that, it will help Anchorage and it will help Alaska. What about native corporations? What about the Alaska native population here? Uh, sometimes they don't feel very much a part of things or acknowledged for, for the impact they have on our city. I'm a different kind of mayor and that what happens in rural Alaska is very much close to my heart. I understand that uh, former uh, state representative Mary Sattler gave you a nickname. Yes, she did years ago. She called me the walking raven. Were you happy about that? I, I was thrilled. I thought the walking raven, that's great. It's an honor. The raven, it's the creator bird. I, what could be better? I thought it was a high honor. And I asked her, you know, why, why do you call me the, the walking raven? And she said, sometimes you're too full of it to fly. <laughs> And so I, that, I, I took that as high praise and a continual reminder not to take myself too seriously. As the mayor now, you are probably one of the leading Democrats in the state next to the lieutenant governor. So, so you do, like it or not, carry the banner of the Democratic Party in a way. If I can persuade the Democrats and the Republicans that we've got to transcend that old kind of politics that's just based on which party is going to win, then I'll have done a, a bigger service than party allegiance. And we've got to get to that point where we start to look at what's good for Alaska, what's good for Anchorage. And if we make our decisions based on those criteria rather than how am I going to win an election, we'll, we'll be in fine shape. And I think ultimately, too, it's a better kind of politics. I remember a long time ago talking to Governor Wally Hickel, <laughs> and he, he said, that Ethan, he's a smart boy. Of course, to him, an age uh, difference. You know, I, I'm proud that Wally Hickel was a mentor of mine. I spent a lot of time with him. He, when I first ran for office, apparently the legislative district I represent was designed so he would never be represented by a Democrat. Um, I, I worked hard enough where I was able to prevail. And after that, I got to know him well, and I would visit with him. And he had a very simple philosophy. And his philosophy was, if it's good for Alaska, do it. And if it isn't, screw it. And frankly, I think that's the correct approach to have. And he was blunt. He was visionary. Didn't always agree with where he wanted to go. But he was a straight shooter, and that's the right kind of politician to have, because you're not a politician at that point. You're a statesman. Well, some of your critics, and of course, you're, you always, you They're never, you never kids. shed those. <laughs> but they said, you know, this is looking like Mark Bagage 2.0. How are you different from Baggage, or are you very similar? Again, those are people who d haven't taken the time to know me and who have caricatured Mark Baggage. We're, we're very different people, run in Anchorage at very different times. Are there good things about Baggage's administration? Absolutely. There are good things about Baggage's administration. There are good things about Sullivan's administration and Fink's and Wirch's and Maestrom's and Knowles. Everybody did good things. Do I agree with everything that each and every one of them did? Absolutely not. But they were the mayor at a particular time in the municipality's history. And the people entrusted them to lead through that period of time. So from the Baggage 2.0 camp, they say, well, you know, Ethan is going to be true to his liberal stripes and, and you know, give the union a pass, and, and we'll see the budget grow and grow. If you look at facts, Mayor Sullivan just concluded budget nego or, uh, negotiations with, with nine of the unions, and the, the, those deals are done. And so they're off the table for me. So now you've had a long relationship with Andrew Halcrow, mm -hmm. and many people would be surprised, even despite that long relationship, that here you are after a campaign, and he was your opponent, that now he's working with you. You might characterize Andrew as simply my opponent or someone I served with in the legislature. Andrew's also my friend. And we don't have to agree on everything, 
but we can still be friends. And when you have friends who are not identical to you and your perspective, I think that forces you to defend your, your positions, articulate more clearly the reasons why you're taking those positions, and it ultimately makes it stronger. Do you still think that we are a frontier city? Absolutely. And we're a frontier city for a simple reason. It, it means something to live here. Every person here can make a difference. If you work hard, if you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve, you can do it here in Anchorage. And if you do it here in Anchorage, that's the essence of a frontier. We're not constrained by where we came from or how long we've been here or what we look like. The only limitation is our own imagination and our ability to work hard. One other note about that nickname given to Ethan Berkowitz by former Bethel representative Mary Sattler. It's the Lugahook Biar, uh, Yupik for a walking raven. Now, if you want to hear more from the mayor, we continue our conversation with him on the Frontiers section of our website, ktva.com. Well, up next, advice for Ethan Berkowitz, Anchorage mayors of yesteryear, weigh in. As the mayor of Anchorage, you have a significant voice and you also have a significant role in state policy. The Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium provides comprehensive health services for Alaska Native and American Indian people across our state. In addition to world-class care at the Alaska Native Medical Center, our work delivers health services for rural Alaska. From cutting edge technology for the best care possible, to modern construction of clean water systems and health clinics, to health training and outreach that honors our culture, our vision is that Alaska Native people are the healthiest people in the world. Sometimes it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference. Jason Dolph, second generation firefighter, knew what he wanted to do since he was three. Inspired by his dad, who always came home knowing he had helped people. We can all work together to make sure the littlest Alaskans grow up to achieve their biggest dreams. For small steps you can take to make a big difference, visit alaskachildrenstrust.org. Start small, dream big. Alaska Children's Trust. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. Uncle Sam. Thank you for teaching me about four-wheeler safety. Because you, I know to wear a good helmet that fits. Give me a toolkit in case I break down. And a safety kit. Or if I get hurt. You taught me to come to a complete stop before crossing the road. I always check the weather and tell someone where I'm going. And never ride too fast. Especially after the dock. I know how to be safe riding because of you. Thanks for being a good example. With the new KTVA 11 News live stream, you can stay up to date on Alaska news, sports, and weather every day from anywhere. In Homer. In Tanana. From the Capitol. At Denali Base Camp. From McGrath. Here at the Port of Anchorage. In Kodiak. Here on Prince of Wales Island. From Barrow. In North Pole. And we mean anywhere. In Portland. From Boise. From Denver. In Washington, D.C. From Reykjavik, Iceland. From Afghanistan. At 35,000 feet above South Dakota. Try it today at ktva.com slash stream. For every Anchorage mayor that's served, the job starts out as a new frontier. Take Mayor George Sullivan. He took office during the oil boom days and used cash for major building projects like the Performing Arts Center. Succeeding mayors were dealt a different hand when oil prices plunged. But one thing stays the same. Every administration must find ways to balance the challenges and opportunities. Good afternoon, Office of Ethan Berkowitz. What do we think this looks like and what needs to be done? We caught up with Ethan Berkowitz on his first day on the job. Very little in his office belongs to him, not even this old clock. A reminder, the city of Anchorage has swung back and forth between Democrats and Republicans running this office, even though it's a nonpartisan job. I think we are out of luck. Another reminder, as the official mayor's roster was taken down to be updated, Anchorage has a wealth of former mayors to draw upon for advice. I see the former mayors in front of me and their wives. They had front row seats at the inaugural for Mayor Rick Maestrom. The flowers in Town Square are a reminder of his City of Lights and Flowers campaign, which he believes helped people feel that they could do their part to make Anchorage a better place. Ethan has really only four responsibilities. Create a vision, 
develop a strategy to reach that vision, line up the people to make it happen, and motivate. I solemnly swear that I will support and defend. Jack Roderick is the oldest living mayor and says from its very beginnings, Anchorage has been a magnet for those seeking a better life. And it's up to the mayor to keep that tradition alive. This is a town of opportunity for young people. I think they think they can do more up here than somewhere else. Mark Bagich says it's the mayor's job to create a sense of optimism even when the going gets now tough. Now it is our present, it's our place. If you come to the office every day saying there's huge opportunity every day, what's next on the agenda? What more can we do to make our city a better place? People feel that. Bagich says the mayor has another important role to play. As the mayor of Anchorage, you have a significant voice and you also have a significant role in state policy. Now, I will tell you from experience, the state legislature will not like that. I hesitate giving advice because different times and different situations demand different action. Well, just two floors up, so just come up and bang on the door. But Tony Knowles believes Berkowitz is off to a good start. Beginning with his campaign, which was really based on what's practical and important to the community of Anchorage and how would he play that as a mayor. Newell says Governor Bill Walker's bipartisan administration bodes well for the new mayor. Uh, obviously uh, the election of uh, Bill Walker as an independent with the unity ticket uh, was certainly not expected and but it hit a note of people that are tired of partisan politics. Ethan certainly did that in running for mayor. But Knowles did have one criticism of the new mayor. Just don't get upstaged by your kids again. <laughs> With his natural energy, integrity, and sincerity, my dad is the kind of guy who can lead us into the city's second century of existence. To be upstaged by your kids. Alaska's flag to Alaska's Probably something Berkowitz can't avoid. The simple flag on the last frontier. We did ask the outgoing mayor to weigh in. Dan Sullivan summed it up in just four words. He said, don't screw it up. Well, now to our Frontiers quiz. We asked earlier what Ethan Berkowitz was doing in this photo. Was he, A, working on a political campaign, B, studying law, C, working in Antarctica, or D, working as an intern. Well, if you guess that he was working in Antarctica, you are right. Before his career in politics, Ethan worked there doing a wide range of jobs, including shoveling snow. Well, we hope our program has given you a chance to get to know Anchorage's new mayor a little better as he starts his new political adventure. And from all of us at KTVA, may you find your own frontier. Until next time.